corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I have another book talk video to share with you guys and today we're going to be talking about The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This is the first book by Rachel that I've read though I can see that she has written quite a few books already so that's that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to start right off the bat by telling you guys I finished this book in a couple of hours. I could not put it down. I got this for Valentine's Day from my husband and I just I couldn't stop reading it. So this book is a fast-paced, in my opinion, mystery that's also a kind of modern retelling of Jane Eyre, kind of. It, it was fun. It was a really fun read. That's sort of the best way for me to describe it. I had a ton of fun reading this. I kept my interest right until the very last page. Um, once I found once we got to the main sort of reveal, I was able to guess the rest of it fairly easily, but I still enjoyed the ride right till the end. So this book is about a girl named Jane not her real name. She's she's kind of on the run. She when she was younger she's I think 23 now when she was younger she used to live um, in foster care and um, we learn early on something happened so she runs away from Phoenix Arizona to I think she's down south somewhere um, like one of the southern states like um, Alabama maybe and so she's down there and she's trying to start over. She stays with um, a guy that she knew when they were both in the foster system. Um, and she works, I think, in a coffee shop at the beginning, but then she picks up jobs walking dogs in a very um, affluent part of town. And the pay is good. She's also got this weird thing where she's a bit of a kleptomaniac. She goes into these wealthy people's homes and she likes to try to find something that she thinks they won't notice and she steals it and then tries to pawn it off. Like if she sees a pair of diamond earrings sitting on the table, she says to herself, well, I can't take them both because that would be noticeable. So I'll just take one and the, the wife will just think she lost it. And then she pawns the diamond. So she starts working for a handful of families and then one day she meets a man named Eddie Rochester and, and there's a bit of an accident when they meet but instead of it being a horse it's his very fancy car. So he lives in this neighborhood, he crashes his car, um, he gets out, he talks to her, they have a bit of a brief introduction, and he then goes on to get a dog for the sole purpose of her walking it. <laughs> um, this, I mean, it's a little cheesy. I'll, I'll tell you that right off the bat. It's a little cheesy in parts, but um, like I said, it was a fun read. There are some parts that are cringy too, but we'll put that aside for now. Anyway, we learn that Eddie is a widow, or a widower, and um, his wife, B, recently disappeared about, I think, six months before he meets Jane, and um, her and her friend disappeared. So one night they went out to their lake house for a girls weekend and they never returned. So he gets this dog named Adele, <laughs> which if you're familiar with Jane Eyre, all of these names are going to sound familiar. So he gets this dog named Adele and she begins walking it and over time they strike up a relationship and they start to develop feelings for one another. Jane, of course, is always looking over her shoulder because she was on the run and now her friend, but not friend, but the guy she knew from foster care who she was living with, he's now blackmailing her for money. And she keeps this from Eddie at first, but eventually he finds out 
and um, as time goes by the police are kind of sniffing around because they're still trying to find out what happened to B and Blanche, the two women who went missing. And every time they come around Jane gets really nervous because she doesn't want her history dug into. And so now all of a sudden, instead of laying low, she's literally the girlfriend of, you know, a, a rich widower whose wife has gone missing and the police are investigating. So like she's very much now in the middle of a high profile situation. And um, the book is told from a few different points of view. The first point of view, of course, is um, Jane's. <laughs> And then we get another point of view, and that is B's, and that's his wife, his previous wife. And um, because even in the title, the title kind of gives away what's going on, the wife upstairs. Once we start getting B's points of view, we learn that, she tells us right off the bat, Edward, or Eddie, killed Blanche, and then grabbed B, brought her home, and has locked her upstairs in the fourth floor of their home in like a panic room. So she's got a bathroom and a bed and he brings her food, but she's locked up there. And that's what we're told sort of fairly early on in the book. So now if you don't want any big spoilers, now would be the time to click away because we're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, but yeah, like I said, I enjoyed it a lot. It was a really fun, it was a really fun read. It was a bit cheesy at parts, a little cringy at parts, a little predictable towards the end. But I still had fun reading it. It was one of those kind of fluffy reads that if you just want to curl up with the book, be done with it by the end of the day, this was perfect. Um, it didn't take a whole lot of you know, effort, <laughs> like some books sometimes do. I keep looking out the window, you guys, because it is so beautiful out right now. There are big fluffy snowflakes falling. That's just so nice. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> would recommend, click away if you don't want spoilers. All right, so there's a lot of other backstory that I'm kind of not getting into just because that would make this video way too long. But as time goes by, we get history of B, and also Blanche and her husband Trip, and um, from B's point of view, from the neighborhood ladies' points of view, because now, eventually Jane has moved into the house with Eddie, and they're engaged, and so now she's she's no longer the dog walker, and she becomes friends with the the local ladies, and they confide in her that relationships. We're a bit rocky between Blanche and B, and then Blanche and Eddie and B and Trip, and it was just this whole thing. And we begin to get a picture of B that isn't quite this picture perfect person like B herself is having us believe. Because in the parts of the book that are from her point of view, what she's doing is she's writing in a novel that Eddie has left for her to read. So she's writing over, like sort of in between the lines of the novel, her own story in the hopes that, well, she has a plan for it and it works. <laughs> so she's writing out her story, what happened? She's writing out about how Eddie killed her best friend and now is holding her hostage. What we come to find out later on, because eventually Blanche's body is found, the friend, and Trip, her husband, is arrested because it's all been set up so that that's the way it looks. Um, but soon we find out from different people that, because eventually we get some parts of the book from Eddie's point of view, and we learn that what really happened was that B has been obsessed with Blanche since they were kids. She was constantly hovering around Blanche. Like at first Blanche befriended her and wanted to make her feel welcome. But as the years went on, it became obsessive and that carries on into their adulthood. And so eventually she's the one who kills Blanche because things are just going south and she can tell that Blanche is getting fed up and 
There's rumors of Eddie and Blanche having an affair, which they weren't, which they were not. Um, so B herself kills Blanche and she had lured Trip out to the cabin so that she could blame it on him. She knew he'd get drunk. She figured she could kill Blanche. Trip would wake up the next morning hungover, think he had done it, like B would be able to convince him that he had killed his own wife and they could pin it on him. But what happens is before that can all happen, Eddie had a bad feeling about what was going on at this lake house. So he comes out and he sees B coming back in from the lake on the boat. And um, he knows, he just looks at her and he knows what she's done. So kind of for her own protection um, and his own protection and he's scared because she seems literally insane, <laughs> he takes her home and he puts her in the panic room. Now Eddie's no saint in all of this. He's also incredibly unhinged. So in a way they're like a match made in heaven because they're just both really, really crazy. <laughs> Be more so than Eddie, but they're both, he's really manipulative and even the way he met B was, ugh, and it's just all a big mess. <laughs> So what B does is she writes from her point of view, she writes out the whole story and she, in one of the times when Eddie comes to visit her and bring her food and they've also been sleeping together the whole time that he's been engaged to Jane downstairs, B puts the novel in his pocket knowing that when he goes downstairs, because he's in the shower at the moment, knowing when he comes out and goes downstairs, he's going to be too warm from the shower. He's not going to put his jacket back on. And she hopes and prays that Jane finds the novel in the jacket, which she eventually does. So when she does, she goes to rescue B. She's like, oh my God, this poor innocent woman is trapped in the attic. Although she's a little relieved that he didn't kill her. Because at this point, up until this point, she was starting to really have her doubts that Eddie did not kill his wife. She's like, he clearly did. And she's starting to get scared of him. So she goes up to rescue B. While she's up there, Eddie comes home and he starts looking for her and he comes up. They see that he's coming. Jane grabs this metal pineapple, whacks him in the head. Some of his teeth come out and um, they lock him in and they go downstairs and they're having a drink and um, Jane and B, they're talking and having a drink together and Jane's kind of like, why aren't you freaking out? Your husband had you locked in the room. And B's like, why aren't you freaking out? Your fiance had his wife locked up in the attic and they're both kind of realizing that all three of them at this point are unhinged. <laughs> so the fire alarm in the house starts going off. Now I'm not sure if we ever know where the fire originated but the fire alarm starts going off. Jane runs out of the house. B runs upstairs to save Eddie. And Jane's kind of like, that's the difference between her and I. She still loves him. Her instinct was to run upstairs. My instinct was to run out the door and leave him. So then the police come and the fire department come and Jane's in the hospital. She wakes up. She's told like, um, your fiance is dead. She's kind of like, yeah. <laughs> And then she's like, oh, did you find his body? And she's like, no, no, we didn't find any bodies in there. The fire was burning very hot. We think everything was burned up, but we did find some teeth. And so Jane's kind of like, hmm, I knocked. She doesn't say anything out loud, but she's thinking to herself, I knocked his teeth out. Maybe him and B escaped. And so she doesn't bring it up. She's like, you know what? If they escaped, they're toxic together. Let them be toxic together forever. I'm, I'm done. So she hangs around for a while. She stays with one of the friends she made while she was the, the soon to be <laughs> Mrs. Rochester. And um, eventually um, Eddie's lawyer comes looking for her and he tells her that before he died, Eddie had his will changed to make her the beneficiary and she finds out that she has now inherited two of his, like his two companies, plus his massive wealth. It's hundreds of millions of dollars. 
and she's finally able now to go and live her life and she's like maybe this is the final you know they're giving me this money in exchange for their freedom they have each other they don't care about the money anymore they just want to be free and be left alone and so off she goes she leaves she leaves town at first she has the thought like maybe i could buy a new house in this neighborhood and try to run these businesses but eventually she's like no i'm gonna sell them hit the road get myself a tiny house somewhere take adele the dog hit the road and see what see what life brings us so there you go you guys that is the wife upstairs by rachel hawkins i had a lot of fun reading it um i would i think i would check out more of her books um if if i ever came across them a nice light read with some mystery some excitement quick read loved it anyway let me know in the comments down below if you have read this book and if you did what did you think of it um, have you read any other Rachel Hawkins books? Would you recommend them? Thanks, guys. I hope you have a great weekend, and I will see you again real soon. Bye.